So now I'm going to give a brief demonstration of how to use SVN, also known as Subversion. Uh, this is going to be a live demonstration and it's intended to give you an idea of how to actually use this tool. So I'm going to do several things. I'm going to show you how to check out part uh, of an existing repository. Then we're going to inspect the log, um, look at some past changes and compare them. Then we'll make a change to one of the files in the uh, working copy that we've checked out uh, and commit the new version of the file. Um, we're going to also create a new file and commit that. And then just so we leave the repository back in its original state, um, just for the sake of this exercise, we're going to delete the new file that we committed. Uh, and we're also going to undo the change that we made to the first file. So we're going to be doing, doing this from the command line. So if I am in a terminal session, and I just browse somewhere uh, to an arbitrary directory uh, that I've created on my machine uh, where I'm happy to actually um, duplicate the, the, the a copy of part of the repository. Then the uh, name of the command that drives everything in the case of subversion is SVN. For example, I can do SVN dash dash version to see which version of SVN I'm currently using. Now I have uh, an address of um, the repository, um, namely the, the URL of a location um, where it is accessible. And if I want to check out um, a particular part of the repository, I do SVN checkout. And I'm going to paste in the link here. So as you can see, this is quite a long URL. So um, essentially, it's um, it's going to be uh, so. So you see that it's a URL because it's HTTP, and the address is um, a server located at the University of Edinburgh. And um, the name of the repository in this case is um, is EPC, EPCC training. So this is just the name of the top level directory, also known as the root of the repository. Then it has um, a trunk subdirectory, with, which is typical of SVN repositories. Uh, this is where this is where the um, uh, where the majority or the or the main or original um, branch uh, of materials lives. So somewhere within the structure, um, there is um, there are some materials. I just happen to know this. There are some materials related to, uh, there's some code, um, in fact, related to a uh, computational fluid dynamics uh, example uh, written in Python. So I'm going to check out not the entire repository, which would be accomplished by specifying SVN checkout and then the URL part that I've highlighted, but I'm just going to check out this subdirectory. So I see here a list of a few files. These are the contents of the directory. And the letter at the beginning of the line for each, in each case denotes uh, that this has been these files have been added uh, locally to our working copy. And the message says checked out revision 761. So in SVN, the revision number um, so revisions are like snapshots in SVN, and the revision number simply tells you um, how many revisions have been uh, committed since the start um, or initialization or creation of the repository. If I now type ls, I can see that this directory has appeared on my local machine. If I enter into it, I can see that there are now a number of files. So these are Python scripts have a, a brief look at one of them. You see it's just um, some source code, some script. So uh, we can do various things. One of the first things we would like to do is to um, type svn info 
If this is the first time we're having a look at the repository, this will give us some information about the repository. So this tells us that um, the working copy is located here locally on this at this, at this location uh, on my machine. It tells us that the URL from which the repository was obtained, or the URL from which the working copy was obtained, is as follows. It tells us the root of the repository. Um, and various other um, bits of information. For example, the last some information about the most recent changes made. Namely, who made the most recent change, i.e. the most recent commit what that number was and uh, what the date was for that last change. Now you might be surprised and say and see that the last change revision is a number, revision number 673, which is lower than um, the revision listed here, 761, which was the same thing that we were told was a revision that, that the repository is currently at when we checked it out. But what this actually refers to is um, the um, the revision number the uh, uh, the revision number of the latest change change made to the part of the repository that we've checked out. In other words, um, revision six seven three in the global uh, numbering scheme for the entire repository was the last change that was made or last revision that was um, committed for this uh, Python directory. So the next thing that we said we would do on our list for this demonstration is to inspect the log. So this we can do by typing svn log. This spits out a list of log entries. At the top, the most recent one, namely uh, revision 673. So each line separated um, or line of dashes separated um, section amounts to a single commit. So the most recent revision to this part of the repository was revision 673 made by author with username dsh um, on this date, time, etc. And there's a one line um, message that was the commit message entered by this author. So you can see that if you look at uh, past uh, commits, the commit history for past revisions, you see that uh, there were a number of changes made to the code in this directory, namely to do various things, include vorticity, um, use different files for plotting, write out vectors at regular intervals. Um, so there are a number of, of changes that were made. And you see that the log um, only gave us the, the so the svn log command gave us only the the, the the log for this part of the repository. It didn't give us the most recent um, revision history for the entire repository, which would include revision six um, seven six one. And so if you look a bit further down, you see that in fact between revision six six eight and three six one. Um, in the global numbering scheme, there were no changes made to this part of the repository at all. So um, we can get a bit more information about the changes that were made uh, by using an option, svn log, dash dash, verbose. Again, this um, returns history of the commits. This is where the command with the option for both was entered. So now, in addition to the um, information that was previously displayed, the commit history for each commit now shows um, lines denoting the uh, files which had, which in some way changed, i.e. these files were uh, recorded in the commit. Then there's a letter preceding the file which denotes the kind of changed. So in fact, um, the letter A stands for add. So in this case, during commit 673, these two files 
CFD Vort and Jacobi Vort uh, were added to the repository. They did not previously exist in previous revisions. So the commit message, this makes sense if you look at the commit, commit message because that says code to include for forticity. So clearly at this, um, at this stage, these two files which include forticity as a feature were added to the repository. If you look at commit 672, you see that there are also two files, but in this case, letters preceding the files um, are M, which stands for modified. So in this case, um, in agreement with the commit message, it just says that uh, in this commit, uh, these two files were, were modified. They were updated to do something else, to use two different files for plotting. So you can see that a lot of the history consists of modifications to files. Modification, modification, modification. If you go all the way back to the initial, to the earliest uh, commits that um, involve this part of the repository, you see that they all involve additions. So these were the original um, insertions of the code and actual, actually the creation also of the directory structure. Now, if we want to actually uh, compare the um, the changes to the to these files, so for example, if we look at uh, revision six seven two, there were two files that were changed. One of them was cfd.py. Now, if you want to look at uh, what were the actual changes that were made to cfd.py between revision. Um, well, between revision 671 and 672, we can do the following. We can type svn diff, and then if we give an option, dash r, which stands for revision number, 67, um, let's see which one, 67, Let's see six. Let's try six. Um, let's try six seven one. Actually six seven one, and six seven zero, oh. and the file for which we care to know the difference between uh, different um, versions is cfd.py. So if you look at what this returns, uh, it, there's a certain notation system that's used by version control systems to denote uh, these differences. I mean, this is uh, similar to what you may be familiar with if you do um, a regular diff operation in, um, uh, in, in for example, in, in Linux in a, in a shell session. So um, entries that uh, were present in revision 671 are denoted with dashes. Entries that were present or lines, in other words, that were present um, in revision 670 were, are denoted with plus symbols. So you see that these two lines, uh, the top one was the previous, um, no, the new version, version 671, and the bottom line is the old version 670. So the only thing that changed was that um, <laughs> this lowercase f was um, in factor, but it was capitalized. So you can scroll down and see the actual literal changes to the uh, to the code. So these are the um, the changes that were made um, to this particular file in going from version six seven zero to six seven one. For example, here um, the new version includes uh, an additional um, variable that's being written out. Um, as part of the data output, namely scale factor. And this matches, this, so this, this is co complements very nicely the, um, the log and the commit, commit messages in the log because the commit messages give an overview um, and tells you what has changed. So um, we can we can see that the commit messages refer to the uh, scaling vectors, and we can see in the actual changes in the code uh, what the changes were that were made. 
So in that sense, the the commit messages provide the the, the why, and the actual differences in the code show you the how and the concrete um, the actual the actual differences. Now the next thing we meant to do um, was to so we've compared past changes. The next thing to do was to make a change to a file and commit this new version of the file to the repository. So let's remind ourselves what are the files that we have here. So if we simply decide now that we're going to make a change to cfd.py, opening up that file in the text editor, and I can make some arbitrary change. For example, um, I can just insert an additional line saying um, running um, the simulation. So I save this. So this file has now been modified. If I so so one one of the another useful important command that's um, uh, not even that specific to SVN. It, it, it it's a very general. It's a command that occurs in many version control systems, namely status. It tells you the status of um, the working copy from the point of view of the uh, latest um, state of the repository that it know, that it knows about. So if I do SVN status, it will tell me that a single file, cfd.py, uh, has status M modified. So it's realized it, it knows what the um, last checked in uh, version of cfd.py in the repository was, and it looks at the current state in, of, um, of, of cfd.py in my uh, working copy of the repository and sees that there's a difference. If I type SVN diff, it will actually tell me what the difference is. So when I use when I used SVN diff previously with the option dash R, I was comparing the differences between revisions that were already checked in, i.e., already committed and recorded in the repository. Now with simply SVN diff, I'm instead uh, getting the version control system to tell me the differences between uh, the current working copy of a file and the most recent uh, revision in the repository. So as you expect, this shows that um, this line is the one that's added in the working copy. Interesting, interestingly, what it's noting is the um, it is indeed noting that this is a change with respect to the most recent um, revision in the um, of the of the entire repository. So it doesn't actually uh, dis um, uh, bother to uh, check when the last change was actually made to cfd.py um, at revision six um, six seven three or whatever it was. So now if we would like to commit this uh, file. So we would like to commit, so as we said, we've made, some, we've made a change to a file in, in uh, the working copy, and we would like to commit this new version of the file to the repository. So we know that, um, so there's a command svn commit. However, um, if we simply type svn commit, it's going to give us, um, it's going to complain. And the reason it's complaining is because um, it says that it cannot find an external editor. Um, essentially what's happened is that we've told it to commit um, the changes. Uh, however, it in general, um, virtual control systems, including SVN, uh, want you to provide a commit message. So um, it checks by default. What it does is it, it, it checks whether there's an envir environment variable set that will tell it which editor to use, which text editor to use, uh, in the absence of, um, of any other specification on our behalf, uh, on our part. But since we've not, so, uh, since we've not specified uh, that uh, environment variable, it's not set, it actually complains. So we have two options, either we set this environment variable 
or we use um, the following option dash dash message or dash m when we commit and then we um, pass the value of it we pass a string to that option telling uh, give, giving the commit message so we can say svn commit dash m um, so we say here um, what we did we said we um, It's a very simple change, so it, it's, it's not very much to describe. It's a very fine-grained change. So we could just say that we uh, added printed out additional information to user in cv.py, cfd.py. So now what's happening is that it is sending, um, so SVN is sending the uh, content, uh, the changes that were made in cfd.py. Uh, it's transmitting that file data from the working copy to the repository, and it says it's committed revision 762. So it's, in, in other words, it's uh, increased the overall revision number of the repository by one. So our, this, this new version has been committed, so we'd expect it to show up in the log when we type SVN log. Now if we look at the mo most recent entry, it is still 673, um, so that's surprising actually. But the reason for that is, uh, is a slight quirk uh, over the way that SVN works, uh, which will be clearer, it'll be clearer why this is um, when we look at more detail in at um, the difference between version control systems uh, the next uh, virtual tutorial but essentially uh, it's because the log is stored in the repository and because the repository is not um, uh, so so it's stored in the repository but our working copy has not yet been updated with the most recent state of the repository so even though we've committed um, this this new version in the repository, and therefore the, those the, that version of the file, there are the versions of the file in the repository, and in our working copy are the same. The log file is not the same, so we need to explicitly update our working copy. So we use the update command, svn update, and now our working copy is also at revision seven six two. So if we now do svn log. And I'm also going to use an additional option to log saying dash L5. And dash L means show only the most recent, um, however many commits you specify. So only show the most recent, but only the most five recent commits. Now we see that uh, revision 762 here is in the log. That was our, that was our um, change uh, that we made to cfd.py. So our next objective was to create a new file and commit it to the repository. So we can um, simply create a new file, um, demo, demo file, add some content, just a dummy file. So I've saved that content, closing the file. So now there's a file called demo file. If I type SVN status, then we see that it notices there that this new file has been created. So um, um, the, instead of letter, it shows um, question mark. So if we look at SVN help status, we can see an explanation. So this is very useful to refer back to. Um, we can see an explanation of what these different letters mean. So the exclamation mark means that the item is, uh, sorry, the question mark uh, means the item is not under version control. So essentially what's happened is that the version control system has noticed that uh, a new file has appeared, which is not yet under version control. In other words, you've not told it um, that you want it to be committed in the repository. So if you were to say SVN commit, then it wouldn't do anything. What we need to do to um, add this file 
well, well to commit this file to the repositories we need to tell SVN that that um, we want to commit it um, well <laughs> essentially we want to say that we want to include it in a commit so first we have to actually mark it as um, destined to be committed now this is done by doing it with the add command so SVN add uh, demo file so now the status essentially the message that it's just returned is the same as what you would get if you type SVN status which is that this demo file is now considered if we look back at what A means we've seen it before as added so this is it, it's not just to be clear um, it's it's not yet been added to the repository that is to say it's not yet been committed it's just been scheduled for addition to the repository i.e. scheduled um, to be recorded uh, when you next commit so we can do that we can do svn commit and give a message um, for the sake of demonstration purposes So it's adding that, that file, transmitting the data, committing the revision. Again, this will not show in the log until I update our working copy. Then if I look at the last uh, three entries in the log, I will see that uh, this new file um, appears um, here. I can see, I can look at um, the proposed version of the log and we can see that this file was added. So now finally, because this is actually um, this repository is actually um, a repository that we that that we use at um, at Archer and at EPCC for uh, training materials. <laughs> I'm not going to leave these changes as they are. Uh, I'm going to um, essentially revert them or undo them. Although, as you'll see, um, I will not actually be wiping out uh, a record of the fact that I made them, because that is actually very difficult to do. Instead, I will be um, uh, deleting. Uh, removing this file from the repository and um, undoing the change to cfd.py but it will still be evident when you look at the log uh, what these changes were it will be evident that, that they were made and if you do diffs uh, between the revision between the relevant revisions you will continue to be able to see in perpetuity what these changes were so that that um, is just an example of, of uh, that shows you um, how much um, control and, and, and retrospective sort of information a version control system can give you. So the first thing I'll do is delete the file that we've just added. So if, if I do, if I simply remove the file as one would normally do, we'll see what happens. At the moment if I type SVN status then nothing is returned because um, the current okay, the state is the same as the last revision in the repository. If I remove the file demo file and then type svn status it will say demo file exclamation mark if I go back to the help for status and look at what exclamation mark means as I said previously it means that the item is missing removed by non svn command so essentially what what that means is that um, it notices that this that this um, file is gone but it's not um, expecting it to be gone. So if I now were to type svn commit thinking that I would commit the removal of this file to the repository it seems as if nothing happened. And the reason why nothing happened as you see svn status still reveals the same thing is that we didn't make it clear, we, didn't, we did not make our intention clear to um, SVN. So we haven't told SVN that we actually want to remove this file from the repository. To do so, instead of doing normal remove, we do SVN remove demo file. And as you see, if well, you cannot see, but I'm trying to tab auto complete demo file, which of course will not happen, will not happen because demo file is not is, is no longer present in the working copy. But um, SVN knows um, what kind of object it is because it has a record. So if I do SVN remove demo file, I don't know what I'm talking about. And now it'll, it'll schedule uh, D stands for deleted. So now it's a scheduled 
demo file for deletion from the repository at the next commit. So now if I do svn commit m deleting the file added as for demonstration purposes. It shows me that it's not transmitting data to the to the repository. It's um, just issuing a delete command. Um, if I update my local copy and look at the log. can see that um, demo file was deleted so uh, so in other words so you see here that um, the fact that I added the demo file uh, is, is, is persist I mean that's still visible in log you can all you will always be able to see that at revision 763 I added it at revision 764 I deleted it that doesn't go away the file itself goes away but the record of the history doesn't doesn't so if I um, so now the second thing to, thing to do, or the last thing to do actually, was to undo the change we made to the cfd.py. So if I edit cfd.py and remove the line that we added, save it, you can see it notices that it's changed. It's now going to make a commit. I'm going to say um, change cfd.py back to um, its state at revision uh, 6, 7, let's see which one was it, um, well I'll just say to its state before being changed for demonstration purposes. Okay, so that's changed. I've updated my local local working copy. And I can see um, made that change so okay so we've accomplished what we set out to do now if I want to check and make sure that I did um, change cfd.py back to what it was originally I can do that as follows I can do svn diff dash r and then compare that revision that I've just checked in uh, with the revision um, when it was last changed before I started messing about with it, which was 673. And clearly there's no difference, so um, the file is as it was. So that's a brief demonstration of SVN. Uh, I just want to point out that um, SVN help can be very useful. It gives you a list of the commands, and then if you do SVN help name of a command, it'll give you more information about that command. Um, and this is typically this is true for other um, a lot of other version control systems as well. So even if you're going to end up using a, um, I mean, so that so this for this demonstration was done from the command line um, because that is in a sense the most raw um, way of of seeing what all the commands and possibilities are. And even if you're going to end up using a graphical user interface with a standalone application, it's still worth um, familiarizing yourself with the command line and with the direct command so that you know so so that you know actu actually what uh, what some of the options are um, as that you can easily um, if if need be you can easily drill down and find further information so uh, that wraps up the demonstration of SVN